on hey um hey dalad hey, 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 yes uh Gittin, we're in Gittin uh, hey dalad hey hey base get in hey base what happened wait a second why well even if they were even yeah. if they were the poorest quality payment from the property of orphans may be taken only from fields of the poorest quality Payment not payment may not be collected for the consumption of produce or for the improvement of property or for the support of the wife and daughters from assigned property for the sake of the general good. And one who finds a lost article need not swear for the sake of the general good. Right. So that was, so that is like if a person uh, you know finds a wallet and uh, and says uh, Shabbos and the guy says thank you very much and he and he, and he said looks inside he says but there was there was like two hundred shekels inside this wallet where's the money. And he says, I don't know, I just found the wallet. And he says, I want you to take a shvur. That, and what was he doing? He's, he's being motive of mixed us. If he's a, there's a hundred, there's a hundred shekels in here, that's what I found. So you'd think, okay, this is a motive of mixed us. He's saying, yeah, I know that there, it was, a, I'm admitting to a hundred and he's claiming 200. So maybe you should have to take a shvur. But the problem is that if you start making people take a shvur when they, for, for doing, doing a guy a favor, then they're going to stop doing a shavu sabay day. So that's why they, that's why I said, it's a tikkun ha'olam. Good, right. Interesting, you know, you have a lot of people, you know, especially sort of the reform, talk about Tikkun Olam as being like one of these big uh, things of, uh, of of Judaism. When Tikkun Olam appears in the Mishnah, it's talking about takanas that uh, that Chazal made, you know, little tweaks in halacha just for the general good. Right. But it's not. It's not like uh, this this big thing that uh, you know we've got to fix the world. <laughs> That's not it. Not it. Okay. Um, orphans who relied upon a householder or their father appointed an administrator for them, he is obligated to take to tie their produce. An administrator appointed by the orphan's father must swear, and if appointed by the court, he need not swear. Abishol says the reverse is true. One who rit ritually contaminates another's food or one who mixes it with truma or one who offers another's wine as a libation for idol worship, or if he did it inadvertently, he is not liable. If deliberately he is liable, and Kohanim who deliberately rendered an offering in the sanctuary pigle are liable. Okay, right. So just that, that last thing is that when 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 somebody does a nezik that's not visible, so for example, you make something tame or you make it asur bahana because it's because it was used for avodah you, you can't see any difference in the object. It doesn't now give us a big red label on it saying uh, I can't use this anymore. It, it, it's a, it's not a visible nezik. So if somebody did this accidentally, they're, if they're actually not liable for it. It's only if they did it deliberately. But Chazal said that we're going to punish them for doing it deliberately by making them pay. And the same thing with the Kohanim who accidentally do piggle, too bad. Deliberately do it piggle, you pay. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Um, so this, this mission actually is uh, identical to the one that we see in Adidas. So it should be quite familiar. So he, he gave testimony on, on a few things. And, and why is it here in sitting in Gittin? Because there's one, there's one uh, clause inside what he's saying that's actually relevant to what we've been talking about. Okay. So Rabbi Yochanan ben Gudgada gives testimony. This is what he learned from his, uh, from his rebellion. Okay, a, um, a deaf mute girl whose father accepted condition on her behalf. Um, okay, Shehi Yotz Abaget, that she may be divorced with a, with, with a get in the normal way. Mm -hmm. right? Even though she, her, her marriage is Daraisa, because her father can accept condition on her behalf, she can nonetheless accept the get. Why? Uh, okay, but Al Katana, by Israel, she says to Kohen, similarly, a um, an, an Israelite girl who was married to Kohen Shecheles Bechuma, that she is allowed, right? So she is, uh, so since since she was, this is talking about um, even in a case where her uh, her marriage is Durabanan, with, uh, um, sorry, just, uh, I, I, I was, I was going to skip over the previous point. Let me just not skip over the previous point. Um, with the, the case of the, the Hareshes, the, um, who, whose father accepted Kiddushin on her behalf. She can be divorced. She can be divorced with a get. Why? Even though she's a heretious, her acceptance of the get is uh, is not is not a necessary thing because a woman can be divorced against her will. Sorry. Uh, pre pre Negotian, and the Mishnah is pre Negotian, A woman could be divorced against her will, so she doesn't have to accept the get. That's her problem. She doesn't want to accept it. Okay. It's only Rabbi Negotian who brought about the issue of a Musarev get, 
where, where the woman refuses to accept the gift because at the same time as he said that a woman that a man cannot take more than one wife and that she that uh, the woman cannot be married to get uh, um, he made a whole bunch of uh, of, of haramim and one of them is that the woman has to be has to accept her gift. Okay, but the Mishnah it says that uh, it tells us that the, that even though the woman or, uh, cannot is not mentally capable of accepting her get, it doesn't matter; she can still be divorced. A, a, a woman, a woman must accept the get. That, that's Rabbi Nagoshan. Right. Okay. Okay. Mishnah: the woman, the woman doesn't have to be uh, mentally capable of accepting her get. Okay, but if she is mentally capable and she still says, "I don't want this get," I'm not accepting it. In the in the Mishnah, it doesn't matter. No, okay. It doesn't matter. It's nowadays that, that we have Rabbi Nagershon that a woman can refuse a get. In the same way as a man can refuse to give a get, a woman can refuse to accept a get. But that doesn't, that makes more, I don't know what that's going on here, but that puts that's more problems for her than for him because he can still. Lafka, Lafka, maybe she doesn't want to get married again. Maybe she's got her children. Um, and there are, I mean, that it's a real thing today. You have okay. men who are Musarab get. And okay. as a matter of fact, there's one very prominent person. Have you heard of the singer Shirley Rand? Yeah, I have. I have. I, I think so. Shirley yeah, Rand. yeah. So Shirley Rand's first wife uh, was uh, was Miss uh, Miss Get. She he wanted to divorce her. She refused to accept the get for whatever reason. She was vindictive or just uh, didn't uh, you know she she had uh, she had the children that she wanted and she didn't want to remarry and she just uh, wanted to make trouble for him. So he went around um, the world. Getting a hundred signatures of Rabbanim, giving uh, giving him permission to take another wife. Wow! Because that was also built in. That is also built into Rabbeinu Gershom's cherem that if a woman refuses to to accept a get, the man can get uh, can get to hit him a Rabbanim. And it has to be a hundred. That's the number they set up. So 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 the same so the same Rabbeinu Gershom who forbade polygamy. Right. It says, it says he's allowed that if if. If uh, if he gets a hundred signatures of Ravana, he's allowed to take an, an extra wife. <laughs> so I don't know if in the end she she accepted the get rather than just uh, allowing him to live with another woman. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> Traveling around the world to get those to get the signatures probably costs more than the alimony. I could think. <laughs> Anyways, um, so next, Ala Ketana Bas Yisrael Shani says the Kohen. So now the a minor girl of Bas Yisrael who's married to a Kohen, and she was married to a Bon. So for example, she's an orphan, and her mother and brothers gave her in marriage to the to the Kohen. So that's so this is a case of 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 a marriage to a Bon. She ocheles betruma. Now she's allowed to eat truma. What truma? We're talking about truma to a Bon. Okay, because because being that on the Daraisa level, she's still Israelis. She's not really married to him. Right. Um, until she becomes a, a Bulgarian, and then her marriage becomes a Doraisa. Okay, so but but even while she's a katana, she's allowed to eat uh, truma that's that truma de Okay, and we're not and we're not cautious for the fact that she might come to eat truma Doraisa. We'll just remember, remind her all the time that she's only allowed to eat the Okay, be mesa, and furthermore, if this if this girl dies, her husband will inherit her. So even though her her marriage is still de if she has inherited property from her father, or there was, there was, there was something, or, um, there was something including the kasuba or whatever, and her father will still inherit her, even though the marriage is only the rabbana. While well, a marriage, furthermore, other 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 things that are mentioned here that are not really relevant to get in, but uh, but since they're all in the same statement of Rabbi Yochanan ben Gudda, we mention them here. And a marriage had gazel shebenar right? The large beam that was stolen. And this, and the Gazlan went and uh, and built uh, and built it into his house. And then he looked at this and thought, you know, I feel really bad. I've got stolen property in my house. And he goes back to the owner and says, Look, I, I confess, I stole your beam. Right. So the so the owner says, Well, give it back to me. He says, I'm, I built it into my house. He has the money. And Chazal said, That's okay. She you told his dama that he that he can repay it just by paying them the value. If they kind of so because uh, if they told him now you've got to break down your house in order to give back the stolen beam, he's going to say, "What do I want to do to shiver for?" Okay, so he just wants to, he just needs to give back the the value. Right. And also that um, if a a, a chatas was stolen, um, and it's not known to everyone, that it's that it nonetheless affects atonement. 
okay, why do they say this? Why would they want to give permission for, uh, for a, a chattis that was stolen to, to go into the Mizbeach, as long as it's not known? It's because otherwise your koinim are going to be all nervous. Because okay. everyone, you know, because now, now comes this guy who they know is a, a bit of a dodgy guy, and he brings an animal, and he says, this is for my chattis. They say, like, are we going to put this on the Mizbeach? Maybe it's stolen, and it's, and it's not in a chater, and, like, we're, you know, we, and we're sort of aiding and abetting and, and, and causing... Uh, um, causing stolen property to go into the Mizbeach and then they're not going to want to offer, offer up the Khatas and you know this is going to cause a, a breakdown in the smooth functioning of the temple. So the Chazal Paskin that the, the Hefka, Hefka based in the Hefka, from the den of Hefka based in Hefka, they say that the moment it comes into the hands of the Kwanim, it actually belongs to Gazlan and it's Mechaper for him. So therefore the Kwanim don't have to worry. Once, once When somebody comes to them and gives them an animal for a Khatas, they just say forget it. We don't have to, we don't, it's not our business whose it is. We just offer it. Okay. So, um, all right. Um, is there anything else I want to say about that? Um, why Dafka did we, did they pick on the Khatas? Oh, yeah. Why did they pick on the Khatas? Because the other offerings can be voluntary. So, even if it's not an even if it's not a chaper, okay, so you brought a voluntary ola, or, you brought, or we brought an ola, and ola doesn't have to, but, but a chatas can only be brought if there's a, if there's a chayit and under all, all these circumstances, you can't just bring a voluntary chatas. Okay. So now we're dealing with the din of sikrikon in terms of, uh, in terms of stolen property. Um, okay, so so up, so during the time of the of the Korban uh, Korban Abayas, where the, the Romans were taking over, and um, and, and um, there were, there were, we didn't have a din of sikrikon during those uh, during those times of the of the war. But thereafter, the din of sikrikon uh, comes into play, and the sikrikon is uh, is a bandit who um, or, or some sort of uh, some some sort of uh, mafioso, but, or or a heavy a guy a guy who's coming with with, um, with violence and takes over property. Okay, Laka Ketzad. So what's the din over here? We have a we have a guy who has stolen property. He, he marched in, kicked off the original owner, and said, "I live here now." Okay. So now another another Jew comes along and wants to buy this property. Lakach me sikrikon. So he goes to the so he goes up to the band and says, "Listen, can I buy this property off you?" And the sikrikon says, "Yeah, okay, I'll take it." So 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 he, he gives the money to the sikrikon, but now he's got the Jew. He knows that the, that there was another Jew on the property, and he says, "Listen, I'll pay you. I'll pay you for it too." So he goes to the balabais and says, "Yeah, he has some money for the for this property as well." Mikro battle. As soon as the secret one is gone, and the and the and the Jew he gave the money to comes to Bastin and says, "I want my property back." Bastin will tell him, "Yeah, give him back the money," and the property goes back to the original owner. Why? Because the the problem is that uh, that if he gives the money to the to the secret and the and the and the Jew says, makes a fuss and says, "No, I don't want you to buy it," the secret will come up to him and beat him up and uh, and say, "Listen, I want the sale to go through, so stop making trouble for me." Okay, so so it could be that the that the that the that the, the, the sale to the Jew from, from the Jew was was coerced, right? Because it, it went through the secret con first. Okay, however, if he first goes to the Jew and negotiates the sale, and says, "Listen, I want to pay this off, pay this uh, the secret con off, but first I want to make sure that it's that it's clear with you." So he gives the money first to the Jew, and then he goes to the secret con. That's hundred percent, because now the Jew can't claim he was coerced. Right. Right. The same thing applies, by the way, says the Mishnah. So a, say, a woman has inherited property, but it's now it's now mishubed to her husband, okay, because he's busy eating the perils of the property. So he goes to the husband and says, "I want to buy this property, please." And the husband says, "Okay, I'll, I'll take the money for it, but you also got to pay my wife because it's her property, and I'm just using the perils." Mikrobatel, because even if the woman agrees, if she, 
if she subsequently is widowed or divorced and she comes back years later and says, listen, I want that property back. I'll give you back the money for it, but I want my property back. She's allowed to do that and, and say, why? Also, why did you agree to the sale? She said, because my husband wanted to sell it. What am I going? I'm going to go against my husband. He wants to. He wanted to sell it, and I'm going to say, I'm going to make a fuss. But I want to. But I want it back because I never really sold it willingly. And the, the court says, yeah, make for battle. Mina isha v'chazu alakach mina ish. However, if he first negotiated the sale with the wife and only afterwards came to the husband, mikol kayan. So for the same reason as we said that the sikrikon can't now claim that she was coerced. Yeah. This, however, is the original girsa of of what of our deal with the sikrikon. Based in Shalacherim, Amru, a later based in came and said, rather, Halokach mi sikrikon nosen lebalim rubia. They, 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 he, he's allowed, the, a person who, who purchases from the, from the sikrikon directly may take a quarter of what, he, a, a quarter of the of payments and give it to the, to the owner because they reckon that the sikrikon is prepared to take a quarter, a 25% discount on the property just because, you know, he stole it. Well, so he's, he's fine to take a, a lesser price than what it's worth because it's all profit to him. Okay, so they estimated that, that, that you can underpay the secret fund by, by a quarter, and that quarter must now go to the, to the Jew who had it stolen off him, and that's it, he can't complain anymore. Why did they do this? Because they wanted, um, they, they didn't want the property to remain in the hands of the Goyen, they wanted it to come back to Jewish hands, so they, so they gave an incentive to, for people basically to redeem the property and give a little bit to the, to the, to the Jew who had it stolen. Amosai, when is the Sobizman She'ein Biyadan Likach? That's only if the original owner doesn't have the doesn't have the wherewithal to buy it. Then the original owner has precedence. They have first right of refusal um, to, to, to buy it back from the secret fund because we still want property to remain in the original hands of the owners. Wait, I'm, I'm, I'm confused on something I not following. So the, the owner doesn't have the money to buy. Is that what you said? Only if the, so this 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 yes, it was later to Tana only applies when the original owner doesn't have the wherewithal to buy it back. But if he does have it and somebody else comes before him, he doesn't, he doesn't get it. Then the, then the owner is the one who's, who's entitled to keep the property. He can say to the owner, okay, thanks very much for purchasing it back from the, from the secret con. Here's your money, give me back my property. Okay, because he, he, he can gazump the, uh, that's, that's the term they use for it in England. I don't know if you've heard that before. No, um, talk, but gazumping is like a sort of knocking somebody out of a deal, I uh, out of a property deal. Right. Um, about uh, I think, uh, Rabbi Rabbi Hoshi based in Venimnu. So this is Rabbi Huda Hanasi. He he had a based in that came and ruled. If the property stayed in the hands of the Sikrikon for twelve months. Then whoever comes to, to purchase it from him uh, comes first. But he, can, but he still gives a, a quarter of the value to the original owner. So even if the owner, so, so therefore, even if the owner has the wherewithal, but he delayed by 12 months to redeem his property, nonetheless, whoever, then whoever comes first gets to, gets to keep the property. Okay, we good? Good. Nishra Zayn. Cheresh Romez Venirmas. So when a Cheresh um, wants to marry a woman, so we're talking about on a Durabanan level, he can't he can't affect a, a marriage on a Doraisa level, but he can affect a marriage on a Durabanan level. So how does he do it by sign language? Romez Venirmas. Okay, so he he, uh, he um, in other words, Romez in Romez and other people can can make sign language to him because he can't hear either. So if, if, if you can communicate with him with sign language, then he, uh, then he can affect a, a marriage and say, yeah, I want to marry her. Right. Okay, so even though that, that's fine. Or Ben Becerra on there, furthermore, uh, Ben Becerra comes and says, no, for Nick Pats, which um, according to one reading says that even with his lips, right, he can, he can instead of using sign language with his hands, he can, he can move his lips and we can understand what he's saying. And therefore, he can marry. He can marry like that. So, in that according to that reading, uh, Ben Becerra is giving a uh, uh, giving a heter abometaltelin. When it comes to movable property, he wants to buy something. Uh, so, so oh, this is not just talking about, about marriage. It's talking about any kind of transaction. So, um, 
but the only but Ben Becerra only allows him to do the to 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 use his lips when he's talking about movable property because it's less important. But if he wants to buy land, then he, he agrees with uh, with Chachamim that you need sign language, which is more clearly understood. Yeah, um, but there's another there's another girsa in um, uh, another understanding of profits for nikpats. Which means actually that he actually has to take an active um, an active um, sort of Kenyan to, to pick up something for metaltonin. So, so it comes out actually as a humra, not uh, that he that he has to do more than just sign language, he has to make an action to show that he wants to um, to, to purchase something. So then so there it comes out that Ben Basari is, is adding a humra onto him. Um, yeah. Either way, either way, the the, the halacha does not follow Ben Basera. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I, don't, I don't see that in the Mishnah. It said that it has to do a. Uh, um... No, I'm just giving I'm, I'm giving Kahati's explanation of okay. it. Right. The prophets and nikmats. The the yeah. simplest explanation is that is is that we're talking about lip movements. Right. There's another interpretation that says that he actually has to make up an act of Kenyan. Okay. Okay. Either way, the halacha doesn't follow him, so it's uh, so it's not the vase. Right. Uh, so we're talking about us as children. Mm -hmm. As children who are who are under bar mitzvah, um, they shouldn't be able to make a transaction really because we say that you know, generally we say Khatan doesn't have das. But uh, but it, but if somebody wants to buy or sell from a from a child, and let's say a child is an orphan and they, they want to be able to you know, purchase, go, you know, go to the supermarket and, and buy food. Well, you, you've got to accept that they're going to be able to buy buy things. Otherwise, how's the world going to work? So, so we say that they are allowed to buy and sell in metaltilin only. Okay. In in, in movable property only, but uh, in um, in terms of, uh, of of landed property, they 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 would need an apotropos to be able to do deals for them. Okay. okay. That's it. We, we actually took a lot of time over the, those three Mishnahs. So let's see how much we can do until 10 past 8 and I'm going to have to run. Okay. Okay, so back to uh, Beit Hay. Okay. okay. Wait, it's we're staying, we're staying in Gittin, right? Yeah, staying in Gittin, Beit Hay. Oh, um, sorry, okay. Of, of all are qualified to write a get, even a deaf mute, a mentally deranged person, and a minor, uh, and a minor. Uh, a woman who may write her own get may a man may write his own receipt, but the validity of the document is dependent upon which those who sign it. All are qualified to bring a get except a deaf mute, mentally deranged person, a minor, a blind person, and a Gentile. If a minor received it and then became of age, or a deaf mute, and then he became able to hear, or a blind person, he became able to see, or a mentally deranged person, and he then became sane, or a gentile, and he became a proselyte, he is not. It is not valid. He is not valid. However, if it, if it was if it was a hearing person who received it and then became a deaf mute, and he regained his hearing for a seeing person and he then became blind and then regained his sight, or for a sane person, he then became mentally deranged and then regained his sanity, he is valid. This is the general rule. Anyone who is mentally incompetent at the beginning and at the end is valid. Even those women who are not trusted to say her husband died are trusted to bring her get. Her mother-in-law, her mother-in-law's mother um, daughter, the co-wife, her husband's brother's wife, and her husband's daughter, what is the difference between a get and the testimony of death? That the written document is evidence. The woman herself may bring her own get, and only she must say, it is written in my presence and signed in my presence. Okay. Do you have to go? No, yeah. no, carry on. Nazir, Bab Yud. Okay, Nazir. Okay. Uh, come on, get over here. Why is this all messed up? I don't understand. I was in the right place. You said, you said, Okay. Um, this is all my stuff. I don't know what I did. I had it all straight. Love you. 510, right? No. 610. If he shaved his head following the sacrifice and it was found to be valid, 
invalid. His shaving is invalid, and his sacrifices do not count for him. If he shaved after a sin offering, which was slaughtered, but not for his designated purposes, and they, then he brought his offering for that designated purpose, his shaving is invalid, and his sacrifices do not count for him. If he shaved after the burnt offering or after the peace offering, which was slaughtered, not for the designated purpose, and then he brought his offerings for the designated purpose, the shaving is invalid and his sacrifices do not count for him. Reb Shimon says the sacrifice does not count for him, but the other sacrifices do count for him. If he shaved after all three and one of them was found to be valid, his shaving is valid and he brings the other sacrifices. Someone for whom the bloods of the has been thrown, and then he became tummy. Red Eliezer says he forfeits all, but the common say he should not bring the rest of his offerings to become Tahor. And they said to him, it happened with Miriam the Tarbonite, uh, that one of the bloods had been thrown for her. And they came and told her about her daughter who was in danger. She went and found that she had died, and the sages said she should bring the rest of her offerings and become Tahor. A Kohen Gadol and a Nazim may not become tummy from contact with their relatives, but they may become tummy with an abandoned corpse. If they were traveling on the way and they found an abandoned corpse, Rabbi Elias says the Kohen Gadol should become Tomei, but the Naza should not become Tomei. But the sages say the Naza should become Tomei, but the Kohen Gadol should not become Tomei. The Elias has said to them, the Kohen should become Tomei since he does not bring a sacrifice for his Tuma, but the Naza should not become Tomei since he brings a sacrifice for his Tuma. And they said to him, the Naza should become Tomei, and since the sanctity is not everlasting, but the Kohen should be, not become Tomei since the sanctity is everlasting. Okay, okay, that's it. I've got to run. Okay, I will see you tomorrow. Are you going to be pre-sacrament, pre probably? Uh, most likely, yes. <laughs> great, great. Have a great day. Get some rest. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.